So we see a face switch change right now. And uh, we go from the accumula accumulation phase, which is over right now. There's no more um, steady growth, easy buying, etc. No, we go to the bull market. So there will be face melting FOMO, extreme price pumps. We have a lot of uh, things going on. Narrative is uh, ETF at the moment, of course. That might be in the rest of the year, in 2025, a sovereign fund uh, and nation state adoption. Who knows what's next? It will be very surprising. It will be extreme. On February 27th, after years of defending his model, renowned Bitcoin analyst plan betook to Twitter to rejoice in the resurgence of his stock to flow model. His tweet declared, 55k stock to flow is back like clockwork. Now, let's break stock to flow model to the upside. Over the past two years, doubts had been cast on the credibility of Plan B's stock to flow model, especially after Bitcoin failed to meet his price projection of $100,000 to $150,000 in 2021. However, with Bitcoin approaching its all time high price once again, Plan B seems to have a compelling case for vindication against his critics. In a subsequent post, the pseudonymous analyst declared the end of the easy accumulation phase for Bitcoin, predicting a period of approximately 10 months marked by intense FOMO and significant price volatility. He anticipates a bull market characterized by rapid price surges and occasional sharp downturns. This forecast, he believes, aligns with historical patterns, where extreme price pumps are followed by multiple drops of around 30%. Additionally, in a recent video on his YouTube channel, Plan B provides a more detailed analysis outlining his predictions for Bitcoin in 2024 and 2025. Before we continue with the rest of the video, do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. We had the largest monthly increase in dollar terms of almost 20k dollars in one month. And more importantly, it's above or at the stock to flow model line right now. But always after the price has been below the model, it has gone above the model and far above the model sometimes. So that's what I'm hoping for. In fact, that's what I'm expecting that we're going to break the stock to flow model on the upside after the halving. And um, well, we have two more dots to go, two more blue dots until the halving, a March dot and an April dot. What's next? Yeah, well, I think um, if you look historically after the halving, the price went up, but with a little bit of a delay. And I ex expect that as well in 2024. So we will have price rises, we will have a bull market, but don't ex I don't expect a top in this year, in 2024. I expect the top to be in 2025. Also note the log scale on this chart. The prices go 10x every time from one dollar to ten dollars hundred dollar thousand dollars next chart this is the chart that got very much attention on twitter i think it's one of my two favorite charts next to the uh, sector flow chart big news big news here red dot so what we see in this chart is the soccer flow price again on a logarithmic scale and the colors Note the color axis is different right now. It's uh, not the months until the next halving. It's the phase. So it can be the accumulation phase, blue. We've been there. Can be the bull market, can be distribution, can be bear market. So we see a phase switch change right now. And uh, we go from the accumula accumulation phase, which is over right now. There's no more um, steady growth easy buying, etc. No, we go to the bull market. So there will be face melting FOMO, extreme price pumps. Plan B anticipates a roller coaster ride for Bitcoin throughout the bull market, foreseeing significant upside rallies along with 30% drawdowns. Despite this volatility, he advises investors to remain patient to reap the full benefits of what lies ahead. In a recent video, 
The anonymous analyst compares the current cycle to the previous one, highlighting the absence of a parabolic blow-off top in 2021 due to China's mining ban. However, he expects a different scenario next year, fueled by unprecedented demand from ETFs. Plan B also predicts that before the bull market concludes, additional categories of investors, including sovereign wealth funds and nation-states, will acquire Bitcoin in substantial quantities. Meanwhile, MicroStrategy's executive chairman, Michael Saylor, expresses even greater bullishness. At the Bitcoin Atlantis conference in Madeira, Saylor delivered an impassioned keynote speech and participated in a bullish fireside chat. According to Saylor, 2024 marks a pivotal year for Bitcoin, signaling not just another having year in bull market, but the onset of a decade-long gold rush characterized by unprecedented global demand for the leading cryptocurrency. Clips from the fireside chat underscored Saylor's bullish outlook on Bitcoin's future. If we're looking, if we're talking about the future of Bitcoin, I, I think that we're in the Bitcoin gold rush era. And it started on January, in January of 2024, and it will run till about November of 2034. It's a 10 year. It's an important date, you know. Uh, if you pull Clark Moody's dashboard, you'll see that. Uh, in, in November of 2034, 99% of all the Bitcoin will have been mined. And the last 1% comes out over the next 100 years. For, for all practical purposes, stock to flow becomes irrelevant. The stock to flow ratio of Bitcoin is infinity in 2034. For, uh, within the, the, it's within the tolerance of just random hourly trading of the asset. So it becomes noise. Um, and so you have about 42 quarters, somewhere between 40 and 42 quarters. And if you look at that 40 quarter period, at the beginning of the gold rush, no bank could custody Bitcoin, no institutional investor could buy Bitcoin, no, no Wall Street trading firm, no investment company could handle Bitcoin. And it was unclear whether that ever, ever would happen. That was a binary. And when uh, those spot ETFs were approved, that created a fire or an avalanche. The genie's out of the bottle. It doesn't matter who's elected president next. It doesn't matter who's the next head of the SEC. It doesn't matter. And no politician's opinion, no banker opinion, no regulator opinion matters after that date. That was the most consequential thing that kicked off the, the gold rush. Every single institutional investor would have looked at this and said, Bitcoin interesting, but I can't buy it. Everybody. And so you have 99% of the money in the world that has been unable to buy and so unwilling to consider things. Institutional investors are like this. Like they, they could watch your company and like have a million opinions but don't really care. And you could go to them on a Tuesday morning and say, do you want to buy $50 million worth of this security? And they'll then look at it and they'll give you an answer by 4 p.m. So when they can buy via their, their uh, bank, their institutional wirehouse, their prime broker, they will make a $50 million decision in one hour. And they will watch you and cheer for you or laugh at you for 20 years when they can't buy. So we flipped a switch in January. What you've got is 40 quarters of people getting educated and here's what happens next. All those ETFs, they're only distributed through 20% of the distribution channel right now. They're maybe even 10%. So that, that distribution is gonna go from 10% to 20 to 40 to 60 to 80. And there'll be a point at which uh, all the investors can buy as a business executive and former CEO, Saylor has always emphasized the significance of leveraging loans. In March 2022, a subsidiary of his Bitcoin development firm secured a $25 million loan using its Bitcoin holdings as collateral. This loan was reportedly utilized to acquire additional Bitcoin, cover transaction fees, and address general corporate expenses. Saylor has previously stressed the importance of using Bitcoin holdings as collateral to secure loans in various interviews asserting that this approach enables investors to retain their Bitcoin holdings securely, even during times of urgent financial need. During his fireside chat at the Bitcoin Atlantis conference, Saylor discussed an upcoming bullish phase for Bitcoin ETFs, one that signifies the definitive acceptance of Bitcoin by banks. This acceptance would enable banks to offer loans to holders of Bitcoin ETFs, 
further bolstering the financial ecosystem surrounding Bitcoin. Then the next question is, well, uh, is it credit worthy? Can I borrow against the asset? No major bank in the world will give you a loan against those ETFs yet. They've all got clocks that are running after 30 days, after 90 days, after six months, after a year. So first they let you buy it, then they loan you money against it. None of those instruments uh, can you trade uh, options on. You can't, you can't buy or sell puts and calls on a, a spot ETF. That'll be a year. So what you're going to see is it'll take years for the distribution to open up, for the credit uh, capillaries to work, for the volatility trading to kick in, for the hedging to kick in. Then you'll actually see all the, all the big banks that don't like Bitcoin saying, getting pressured. Like now we have to custody it because our biggest customer wants us to. So right now you can't custody, but there's a big battle afoot on Capitol Hill. That battle will take place. Bitcoin will win that battle. Then you'll see banks custody. Then you'll see one. Then you'll see 10. Then you'll see 100. Then you'll see 1,000. And, and likewise, there's famous analysts. You can name the analysts that cover Bitcoin today. Len Alden, Chris Kuyper, right? Yassin, right? Um, there'll be a day when there'll be 200. You won't be able to name them all. Right? There'll be a day when Bitcoin ETFs have already blasted past gold and then Bitcoin ETFs trade more than the S&P index ETFs. And there'll be a day, I believe, when Bitcoin ETFs will have more capital than SPY or the S&P index. And at that, on that day, the people at Vanguard will say, oops, I guess all the money just shifted out of equity. But that day won't come tomorrow. It'll take many, many quarters. And and by the time we get to 2034, I think you can say the high growth institutional adoption phase of Bitcoin has now moved to just the growth phase. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.